Well, hello, everybody. I decided I was going to come out here and trim up my sweet potato vines. Because as you can see here, get this camera back a little ways. They're starting to sprawl out pretty good. And you know how easy the, the slips are to root after you break them off of the potato? Well, they'll root in your ground just that easy. So I don't want the vines growing everywhere. So I'm simply going to cut them off. Because like I had said before, the potatoes grow in the dirt. They don't grow on the vine. Sweet potato vines are really pretty to put them in a, <clears throat> a vase and have them in your house. They put out a really pretty but vine. Let's go over here to this one. But if you got them in a small yard and you don't want the vines just sprawling out everywhere, trim them up. I've known them to have them in offices in nice pretty vases with a sweet potato vine growing where they end up sprawled all over the office, all over the, the you know, around the edge of the wall and everywhere, and they were really pretty. But that might even help your potatoes uh, produce too because uh, instead of the vines taking all those nutrients that's going back into the potato if it's trying to grow. Now these were the last ones I planted and they don't look too good because little buddy's been laying down, not little buddy but um, Lucky has been laying in them and I had to put uh, I had to put stakes down in there to keep lucky from laying all over the plant because him laying on it all night like he's been doing it kills my plants and I didn't know what was killing part some of my plants and that's what it was it's it was lucky laying in them but I figured with stakes stuck down in the ground in, in the dirt like this <laughs> maybe he'll stay out of it I mean, I see where he's still been getting in a couple of my pots, even though I put stakes in there like that. So I don't know what I'm going to do with him. <laughs> I'm finding a few more over here to put in there. Because I can't let him kill all my plants, you know? Maybe that's enough to keep him out. He didn't seem to want to get in these, these first ones I planted. I don't know why, but he just left them alone. But the last ones that I planted, 
can't keep him out of them. Just like I can't keep him out of the pot up here. This one that I got my uh, caladiums coming up in. Yeah, everything I planted in this pot died, and I couldn't understand why. Why is everything dying? And I come out here one morning, and he was curled up in there asleep, laying on top of my plants. And it had broke them all off, killing them. And he's been getting in this caladium uh, bunch that's been coming up. But I've been trying to keep these sprout, I mean, these sticks in here to keep him from doing that. So, I'm hoping that's going to work. But I need to find a few more sticks to stick down in there. Because he seems to be finding ways to get in there, <laughs> regardless of what I do. Let me shorten up this tripod here a minute. But yeah, if you live in a small area, you got a small yard, <clears throat> and you want to grow sweet potatoes, go ahead and grow them. Grow them like I'm doing. Just put them in a, a tote. You know, put plenty of dirt in your tote. And grow them in your tote. Just keep them trimmed up. So that your um, vines don't grow all over the ground and re-root. And, because if they do that, they're invasive, actually. And they can take over a yard or a garden if you let them just turn loose on the, on the ground. But I figure if I keep them in the pot, I keep them trimmed, no part of the vine can touch the dirt to where it's going to end up rooting and starting a plant and spread all over my yard. And you can see here, I'm throwing this, these cut vines in my fire pit. So they'll dry from this hot sun and I'll be able to burn them right along with you know, cardboard or whatever I need to burn rather than put in the garbage. And I do need to put some more water to my watermelon vines. I don't know how much water got in there when it rained. But I think they'll be all right till my watering day. This one is not going to make it at all. Here, let me turn this around because I'm showing you. That one, it's got a black spot at the end. So I don't think that's going to make it all. I'll just have to put that in compost when I pick it. The other ones, maybe. I mean, so far they're looking good. This one, I think, is probably ready to be picked. I'm going to go ahead and pick it. It's one of the little ones. See, it's turning yellow. And I don't know if this one is or not. But it's got a yellow spot. But I might leave it. I'll cut this one open and see what it looks like. Because i got a couple more of the little ones over here. A little bitty one there. i got two right there. Two in there. I got one there and one over here. <clears throat> but watermelons do need plenty of water. And see, these look pretty good. That's the great big ones. And I got plenty of them coming on there. And that one just, <laughs> you know, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I want it to grow because those get can get 30 and 40 pounds. Because those are the big watermelons there. I planted them just to see what they do. I have no idea what they were going to do. But see, I've got more of them right there. I got watermelons started right there. 
So they're trying their best to produce. And look, that one's got a black spot. So I may have to pick that one. They have to pick it and cut it open and just see what's going on. Because it's not going to do anything. I don't think. Well, I can't cut it with my holding the camera. In. I can't pull it off with one hand. It's on there too tight. <laughs> And the banana tree, it loved the little bit of rain we got. Both of them are trying to put out new leaves, so I don't know if they're going to survive or not. We'll see. Yeah, but I do need to pick this one too, I guess. Because that black on the end kind of reminds me like blossom end rot you get on tomatoes or something i think it just got too hot they didn't get enough water they suffered from the heat and they're probably going to suffer more from the heat this week too but i'm gonna Put my watermelon right there because I'm just curious what they look like inside if they tried to ripen or what's going on with them so I'm gonna go in the house and get a knife and I'll be right back Now, I'm just curious. I'm going to turn the camera around so I can hopefully see what I'm showing you. I'm going to cut this little one in half first. And I have no idea any part of it is ripe, but I want to cut it just to see what's going on. Oh, look at that. It's overly ripe. <laughs> I should have picked it sooner. But it smells good and it's got plenty of seeds in it and I'll be able to plant more. Oh, look at that. That one's just right to eat right now. Cut the bad end of it off. Cut the bad end of it off, and that, that's a good watermelon. I mean, look at that. <laughs> so their growth is stunted with the heat in Texas here, but you can still grow watermelons. They may not get as big as they should get, you know, if they were in an area where it stays a little bit more humid and damp and you get more rainfall. But they will live. Look at that. I gotta take a bite. 
<laughs> See what it tastes like. It smells good. That's good, y'all. That's good watermelon. So with that, I think I'm going to take it in the house. I'm sweating. I've just been walking around here long enough to cut the to sweet potato slips and cut the watermelon, and I'm drenched in sweat already. But, yeah, I'm going to end the video so I can go in the house and cut this watermelon up, and I'll put it in a little bowl and keep it. Now, this one, I can get the seeds out of it. And I might pick the other one tomorrow and see how it looks inside because this one I left too long because it wasn't very big and I was afraid it was going to be green. But I should have picked that a week ago because it's really too soft. I mean, it's edible, but I don't like to eat. I decided I'd show you how I'm going to save my seed. I've got the, save, the seed from the big watermelon here in this measuring cup. I got the little one in here. I didn't save every single seed, but I got enough of them. And I'm going to get the seeds out of this one now and put it in this container pot and take it in the house. I mean, that's good watermelon right there. It's little, but it's good. be my watermelon seed for next year. And like I said, if I can grow them like this here, oh my God, think of what you can grow them in where you live. If you're not in this hot climate like I'm in in Texas. You can grow the big ones. very much rind because the watermelon was made really good. The watermelon is good.
ladies here hanging out. You probably can't see him, but he's on the other side of the pot over here. <laughs> there you go. There he is. Yeah, I got that many seeds for the big watermelon. I got that many seeds for the little one to plant for next year. I just need to take them in the house and wash them off, lay them out on a paper towel, and let them dry for a couple of days, and then put them in a paper envelope and save them for next year. little buddy right there and look who's back here on the step look he's hanging out too I'm out here in the yard they're not far away they stick pretty close <laughs> they're my buddies turn it this way so I can see what I'm showing you <laughs> Little buddy, kitty kitty. Yeah, turn around and face the camera. <clears throat> turn around and face the camera. Let everybody see you. Let everybody see you. He's sweet. And lucky he is too. They're both sweet kitty cats. They like to hang out. They like to stay close. Because they were around on the other side of the house when I first came out here. <laughs> Ain't that right, little buddy, huh? Ain't that right? I think my camera must have cut off. I know I've been out here longer than what it shows.
we'll take this around there and go put it in the compost bin. Man, my poor plants. They look great when it was raining, but now they're just, they look like they're dying. It hurts them right after a big rain. Then it gets dry and then it gets so hot on them. It almost just kills them. It just stunts their growth and everything. <laughs> So there, I got plenty of stuff put in my compost pile. <laughs> now I'm gonna get in here and finish getting my seeds and stuff straight. Get them washed off a little bit and then uh, put them on my uh, paper towel for them to dry. And I'll be good to go.